Okay, so you dappy young intellectual, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, <laughs> thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Great. Um, tell us about your extended essay. Sure. So I looked at, um, I based my essay in world religion, which is a subject that's not offered in most uh, IB schools. Um, and I looked at the manifestation of Buddhism in a martial art called Wing Chun because I knew that a lot of martial arts originally had roots um, based in spiritualism and I wanted to investigate that in a contemporary martial arts such as Wing Chun um, that I practice myself. That was really interesting I, I, I found bringing together of kind of academic research um, in Buddhism and more, more your kind of experiential um, relationship uh, with, with Wing Chun. Um, what other kind of unlikely sources did we go to? Um, there was some consultation with uh, Mr. Tyrell, who's got a, a master's in BS, in, in Buddhist studies. Yes. Uh, um, uh, where else did you go for, for your research? So I went and consulted my, my instructors a lot down at the, the studio where I train. Um, because, you know, you do, you do get the academic side of uh, Buddhism, but a lot of Buddhism talks about the pragmatic side of things and the practical self-experiential part, which is very important. So I wanted to investigate that a little bit more. Um, and I acknowledge that quite heavily in my essay because it's one of the, one of the things that it hinges on very, um, very heavily, I suppose, because um, we have to translate you know, these feelings and experiences that we have into, into this more academic yeah. um, way of, of expressing ourselves. And through consulting with these, uh, these people who, who could show me and, and teach me and train me and guide me, um, I think I was able to translate that, those feelings um, better and relate them to the pragmatic but still very academic and abstract Buddhist uh, thoughts and practices. Cool. Um, were there any particular challenges or kind of changes in direction that um, took place, maybe with relation to this kind of framing of experiential um, understanding in academic language or anything else, any other mm. setbacks or changes in direction that kind of were particularly pronounced in the process? Sure, yes. Uh, I think the main one for me was the the separation of the religious aspect of Buddhism and the philosophical pragmatic one because there are still a lot of in a lot of Buddhist um, sects and, and, and um, the, the religion in whole there are still a lot of um, gods and mysticism and spiritualism involved um, on a plane that's not you know just confined to the one that, that we adhere to so I had to make sure that the research that I was doing was pertinent to something that the everyday man or the practitioner of Wing Chun um, could relate to. So my, you know, if I was looking um, at, at certain aspects and I saw that there were, were gods or the idea of hell involved, then I knew that something like that wouldn't really have a place in my research. So uh, points in the research did you have to kind of go back to your, um, your draft and, and refine your foundational definitions or, or rework kind of your, your introductory sections to make those specifications about the parameters of your research? I'd say so because what, what, what I really had to end up doing was I had to go back and, and investigate which um, which part of Buddhism I was investigating because there are, you know, you can divide it into certain sects. So you have uh, Theravada and Mahayana Buddhism and within those there are even more um, intricate, intricate um, Buddhist beliefs. So I had to make, I had to really analyze each one and see which one, um, which one I could draw information out of because I didn't want to narrow down my research to just one one of the Buddhist sects because um, a lot of uh, what I was looking at in Wing Chun, um, the whole of it applied to a lot of the holistic things like meditation, mindfulness, self-experience um, that Buddhism in general talks about. 
So I had to sort of select, select um, where I wanted to go with that, and it led me to a bunch of different places. Zen Buddhism was one that really stuck out as being, as being um, coherent, I mean, sorry, um, cohesive yeah. with, with, with Buddhism, I mean, uh, with Wing Chun. And so, so, is there some kind of takeaways from it that, that will lead to either further research or uh, formally or informally? Is it, is it kind of living on in your life? I'd say so, very much. I mean, I'm still, I'm still practicing Wing Chun. Um, so down there, right now, I'm still, you know, I'm sharing my essay because I want my, my instructors to, to read it. But it talks, specifically Zen Buddhism talks a lot about the idea of um, mushin or no mind. Um, which which seeks to take the the body and the, the person back to their intuition um, and their base instincts, uh, base instincts and reactions, and it, it's a, it's a really effective way of cleansing your mind from from judgment and prejudice, um, which I think is incredibly important because you know it, it is a little bit of human nature to instantly just judge something and have a um, a visceral reaction to it without really understanding why, mm-hmm. um, and then kind of backpedaling or trying to deconstruct that that reaction because maybe you know it doesn't it doesn't necess- it conflicts with your moral view of something or or intellectual philosophical whatever, um, and I think I think sometimes you have to just let your body react and let your mind react um, because that way you don't get trapped within any of these you know, emotions that can be potentially harmful. And that would be in keeping with the kind of fluid, dynamic um, manner in which Wing Chun operates uh, as a martial art. Very right. much so. I guess finally, um, any uh, advice for students starting out on the extended essay? Sure. I. I think I only did as well as I did because I chose um, a topic that I actually really was interested in, and it is a little bit of a cliche, you know, uh, just study what you like. But it is, <laughs> it does have a certain element of truth in it. I mean, I chose a very niche and specific um, subject, you know, one that's not even taught at our school, um, and it was just me and and one other person out of 130 doing something like that, um, which can be a little bit of a risk, um, you know. You don't really have much to fall back on in terms of past past papers or, or whatnot examples, but um, I just chose to pursue it because I knew I was interested in it. I knew if I just stuck with it, due to my interest in it, I would create something that I was passionate and um, that would translate into a good piece of writing. And it turns out it did. So it certainly did. Yeah, I would say uh, don't knock not don't knock cliches too much because <laughs> they have some truth in them. So yeah, that's that's what I would say. Thanks a lot, Connor.